Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, April 27th, 5.29 a.m. Central Time. Kind of an ugly trade in the grain markets this morning. Mackenzie, July corn futures down four and a quarter at 5.96 and three quarters below $6. July soybeans down seven and a quarter at 14.07 and a half. July Chicago wheat down seven and a half at 6.34 and a half. July Kansas City wheat down 10 at 7.73 and a quarter. July spring wheat down seven and three quarters at 8.05 and a quarter. Let's take a look at this uh, corn chart that we discussed yesterday. So corn futures are trading below key chart support here this morning. The nearby July 2023 contract fell below a, cre a key trend line overnight. The December contract is at risk of posting fresh lows early this morning. Weakness in the broader commodity sector has been a theme for the last two weeks. The Bloomberg Commodity Index lost 2.1% last week and is on track to lose another 2% this week. Okay, so there's no such thing as black and white when it comes to charts. Like just because we fell below this trend line, which I, I do believe a lot of people are watching this, uh, that's not necessarily a death sentence for the market. Is this a breakout or is this a fake out? There are traders out there who will only buy the market when they believe that there is a run on stop orders. And you certainly have some longs in the market, I would imagine, that uh, had some stops below this trend line. So I think that the close today will be more important than where the market trades here this morning. Yeah, we're below some support. There's probably some stop orders being run in the market. Um, if you could come up and close back above I'd like to see it close back above 601 or 602 July futures today um, to say that this was a fake out. That would be a good sign. If uh, the selling continues today, obviously that would be a bad sign. Uh, the broader commodity market is weak. So you mentioned the Bloomberg index. It was down 2.1% last week. It's on track to lose another 2% this week. I think we've got uh, some general or more broad weakness in the commodity sector. This is not just the corn, soybean, or wheat markets. Uh, we've seen the energy markets, crude oil in particular, back off. I can't help but wonder if some some of this is tied to these banking issues again. Uh, the last time we saw banking issues, we saw some weakness in a lot of the commodity markets that was back in early March. And um, I wouldn't, if, if that was the reason, and we'll never know if that's the reason, but I wouldn't be shocked if maybe that had something to do with it. Hey guys, be sure to check out our premium content. We have a new video that comes out every day. Joe, tell me about what we had going on yesterday. Okay, so yesterday, uh, Brian Split from agmarket.net joined me and he is fantastic with charts. This is like a half an hour video. Uh, did the corn market just bottom? Uh, the answer to this question was no, but we had a lot of uh, stuff, a lot of conditional stuff like, okay, if we do uh, end up trading below these support levels, what's the next target? What are some areas to be aware of? We did old crop corn, new crop corn, uh, same thing with soybeans, old crop, new crop. We did HRW wheat, uh, crude oil, a couple different things. This is a really great chart review with some uh, great kind of targets above the market, below the market, some areas to be aware of. If you guys are interested in the premium stuff, sign up today. Go to standardgrain.com. Uh, it takes you about one minute to do on your phone or a uh, computer. All you need is your credit card. Remember, guys, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. This is just a $50 per month subscription. Uh, tons of information direct from us every single business day. Next year's Brazilian soybean crop may be another record. USDA's attache office in Brazil estimated the country's 2024 soybean harvest at a whopping 159 million metric tons. This year's crop, a record, is estimated in the 153 to 155 range, depending on the group. The office estimates that Brazilian farmers will plant 45.2 million hectares of soybeans later this year versus 43.5 million last year. Okay, so they've got a record crop this year, no doubt about it. The, the production estimate for next year doesn't mean anything. That's all dependent on weather. The acreage estimate is what's incredibly interesting. 45.2 million hectares, that's 111.7 million acres of soybeans. Almost 112 million acres of soybeans expected to be planted in Brazil later this year. Uh, last year, uh, for this crop, they planted just over 107 million acres. So uh, they continue to expand at a rapid clip in regard to acreage, which is uh, something to certainly be aware of. Uh, it's going to be something that uh, continues to hinder U.S. Expo export prospects as long as, um, you know, demand is kind of on the softer side and, and China looks to be kind of soft. We're going to talk about that here in a second. But uh, yeah, the trend of bigger acreage in Brazil uh, will continue uh, this year the way that it looks. What about these rain totals? Rain totals across parts. 
rain totals across parts of the U.S. southern plains have been slightly disappointing. Most of southwest Kansas caught one, one inch of rain or less. Amounts up to one and a half inches were noted locally. Parts of north central Oklahoma did the best. Some areas saw up to two inches. Some forecasts had called for up to two to three inches of rain prior to this week's rain event. This morning's forecast offers very few chances of rain over the next seven days. Okay, so this map on my screen here, if you guys are watching, this is uh, supposedly observed precipitation over the last 72 hours. These maps, these past weather data maps, are often very glitchy. They rely on weather station data, which is not necessarily reliable. But it looks to me like this was kind of disappointing relative to expectations. We had been talking two to three inches of rain. It looks like, at best, some of these areas in southwest Kansas caught maybe an inch and a half. Uh, the, the better parts in north central Oklahoma, again, and these are small areas that maybe caught caught up to two inches. I mean, the rain's certainly welcome and it's not a bad thing. I'm not sure that it necessarily lived up to expectations. Um, radar this morning, there's still some rain uh, over parts of Oklahoma, parts of uh, would be Southeast Kansas. That's not a, a real big system by any means. In the next seven days, there's, there's really not much behind that in terms of rain for the Southern Plains. Uh, temperatures, I don't have any maps this morning, but uh, we're gonna see that warm up next week. Uh, for northern areas, central Corn Belt, all of those places, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, we should be back to uh, normal or even above normal in regard to uh, temperatures. Chinese soybean demand is currently soft. Cargill's Brazilian chief executive told Reuters this week, the demand is good, but it's not great. It's not so hot, especially the Chinese demand. They've been buying, but at a pace below what the market expected. While the executive declined to elaborate further, he said that the post-pandemic scenario left many doubts. Yeah, there's definitely some doubts. So last week we had a piece where uh, Reuters, I think also Reuters, cited uh, a couple of traders who said, you know, the Chinese imports in regard to soy Soybeans, it's going to be like 90 million metric tons. USDA has 96 penciled in. So that is a tremendous difference in itself when it comes to the balance sheets, the global uh, supply demand scenario, uh, carry outs, all of that stuff. Uh, crush margins in China are not great. You haven't really heard a ton of news about uh, you know, the big reopening and how the Chinese economy is acting, or maybe I just haven't been paying attention. But uh, it sounds like this is a problem. And this is probably part of the reason that the uh, soybean market's been a little bit soft, I think. Canadian farmers expect to plant the most wheat in 22 years. Canadian farmers intend to plant more acres of wheat, corn, and canola this year compared to 2022 levels, according to a Statistics Canada survey. Seeding intentions for oats and dry field peas are forecast to decline compared to last year. Favorable prices and high demand are influencing planting intentions. Farmers plan to plant 19.4 million acres of spring wheat, an increase of 7.5% compared to 2022 and up 21% from 2021. A 27 million acre all wheat planting is anticipated in Canada, an increase of 6% over the previous year. Lots of wheat in Canada. This was expected, but the uh, the big take home here was that the trade ahead of this Stats Canada report was looking for 18.9 million acres of spring wheat, and they got 19.4. So you're talking a, a swing of a half a million acres versus expectations. So you could read this as being a little bit bearish, the uh, spring wheat market in particular. That would be my take home here. U.S. ethanol production declined week over week. Weekly output of 967,000 barrels per day was down 5.6% compared to the previous week and up 2.1% versus the same week last year. Ethanol stocks were pegged at 25.3 million barrels. The print was down 4% on the week and only slightly down compared to the same week last year. Implied gasoline demand was up 11.6% on the week and up 7.3% versus the same week last year. On average, over the last four weeks, implied U.S. gasoline demand increased 4.6% versus the same period last year. There appears to be something wrong with EIA's ethanol production numbers on a weekly basis. You shouldn't be seeing these big swings like we're up 5% one week, we're down 5% the next week. That's not normal. There's something wrong with the data. Um, the averages for the last two weeks is probably somewhere in the middle. That would be my guess. Uh, ethanol production margins are positive and, and well into positive territory, depending on the location, even 
out west where uh, the cash corn market's still strong or basis is strong at least. I mean, they're 20 cents per gallon positive. You go central eastern corn belt, it's as good as 40 or even 50 cents per gallon positive given spot margins of, or spot prices rather, of ethanol, corn, DDGs, inputs, all of that stuff. So it's not the margins I, that's the issue here. I mean, this doesn't look like a, a good weekly number in a vacuum, but I think that there's something wrong with the data. If you're going to see uh, these numbers hit USDA projections in regard to uh, ethanol production, or corn via ethanol production this year, you're going to need to see Prince average a million barrels per day at, at the very worst and, and probably something better than that, as a matter of fact. We're just not quite where we need to be in terms of uh, ethanol production. JP Morgan was allowed to process payments for Russian agricultural exports. Earlier this month, the U.S. authorized JP Morgan to process payments for grain exports through the Russian Agricultural Bank. The arrangement was no substitute for reconnecting the bank to the SWIFT payment system, one of Russia's primary requests in negotiations for the future of the Black Sea grain deal is access to the SWIFT system. JP Morgan and the Russian Agricultural Bank, which is currently under U.S. and EU sanctions, were given exemptions to execute the transaction, the exporter, and destination of the grain supply, uh, those uh, details were not released. This is like the first I've seen of the United States actually making an effort to work with Russia in any way, shape, or form. Yet Russia, th this isn't good enough for them. They want to be back on the SWIFT system, which is not going to happen. Um, I don't, there, there really wasn't, I, this was the only place I saw this reported, but apparently this was earlier this month. So I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Uh, the latest and greatest regarding the Black Sea Grain deal is that Russia is still not interested in an extension and the markets, uh, as we've discussed, just do not care about this thing anymore. They just don't react to the day-to-day -day headlines. China's president is attempting to boost his image as a global peacemaker. China's President Xi Jinping called Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday for the first time since the invasion of Ukraine. Readouts from the phone call showed no major breakthroughs. Xi has ignored Zelensky's request for a call for months as he was strengthening, strengthening ties with Russian President Vladimir Putin. U.S. officials responded cautiously to the call, saying it did nothing to ease their belief that Xi's peace plan is a non-starter. The likelihood of negotiations between Ukraine and Russia anytime soon appears to be pretty darn poor. I see two things here. So China wants to, there's, they're trying to score some political points with the global public, I think, uh, partially because this war has become incredibly unpopular in the West. Uh, people in, in the United States even are just not a big fan of what's going on. The other thing, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, uh, China would like to see this grain deal renewed. We had this chart from Politico in uh, one of the videos last week, and it's got Ukraine uh, grain exports. And you can see here, China's kind of at the top of the list in terms of uh, who buys grain from Ukraine. They buy corn from Ukraine specifically. And uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I'm not going to say that it absolutely does not because they would probably like to continue to buy uh, corn out of Ukraine would be my guess. Uh, what did the cattle market do yesterday? So both live and feeder cattle futures were up on Wednesday. Live cattle gained an average of 60 cents. Feeder cattle closed a buck 53 higher. Cash cattle trade so far this week has been light. However, there were a few sales on Wednesday in the Western Corn Belt at 180. Box beef had another positive day. Choice ended the day at 309.24. That was up 161. And select ended the day at 287.94. That was up 32 cents. Outside markets this morning, guys, U.S. dollars about flat. Uh, stock market's up. The S&P's up 20 points. Dow Jones up 180 ahead of the cash open. The bonds are off. Um, we've got crude oil up 13 cents at 74.43. That crude's been soft, can't hold a rally, uh, is a contributor to that broad-based commodity sector weakness that I talked about uh, at the top of the show here this morning. Everybody have a great day. Mackenzie, have a great day. We'll talk to you guys on uh, Friday.